Gary Nasai Minasan. Today we are gonna talk about Kamen Rider Gachado Episode 7. Before watching Kamen Rider Gachado Episode 7. Without further ado, let us jump straight into the trailer. Let's go. Kamen Rider Gachado. Okay. Interesting. A new form. Okay, so we got a new form in the next episode. So that is really, really Subarashi. Hopefully, it is gonna get a better treatment than the. I'm not sure what that form actually calls the the mushroom and the the deep marina form, something like that. Because like the that form only appear for like a few seconds and like it just it goes missing, never to be used again. It's like not gonna. Lie, it's kind of like a, a a waste of money to to in, to invest in that form itself. Like I would I would actually prefer to see Odoripa and Kamenti's form rather than this mushroom goofy looking suit something like that but with that being said let us go through the trailer scene by scene to figure out what we can learn from the trailer itself okay so chotomate kudasai almost there okay so we immediately get to see a really interesting scene which is sabo needle okay so sabo needle is gonna be the kami that we're gonna see in the next episode and we actually get to see a few really interesting things it looks like a cactus and we also get a, a, a few arrows around like the hand of the cactus and also the 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 left eye of the cactus itself it might actually be kind of like hinting at us maybe like the cactus has the ability to change direction or something like that or maybe it's able to like propel like the needle to certain direction something like that okay so that is just kind of like my own theory on what is happening here it looks really really good like I, I really love to see like more Kami actually have kind of like a physical body something like that it, it's definitely gonna be really really interesting to see how they are gonna design the some of the Kami moving forward okay so next we are gonna see the rest of the crew is actually inside the how do I say like the the shop I don't think this is yeah or maybe I'm wrong okay I think this is the shop of 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 Hotaro's house like this is the diner and all of them are just chilling together one thing that I actually quite like about how they write the story with these four characters is that they don't bother to kind of like give us a kind of like very very emotional episode where Renge and also Sabimaru is gonna go through with Hotaro before they actually trust Hotaro to be one of their nakama something like that like the both of them just kind of like accepted the fact that hey there's this new kid he's joining the alchemy academy and we are here to just you know let's just have fun okay like let's just vibe together something like that and I, I, I love that they don't like really try to make every single character has a purpose to support Hotaro okay like it can just be like oh we are from the same class so let's get along together something like that but moving forward we get to see this kid is supposed to be the rightful owner of 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 Sabo Needle something like that but then again I, I believe by the end of this episode we are actually gonna see Sabo Needle and this kid is gonna get separated something like that okay but how things are gonna go I'm not sure I believe I mean like we, we actually get to see uh, Hotaro using the Sabo Needle card to become a new form so meaning the card is gonna be with Hotaro okay like this kid is not gonna have his Kemi pet together with him by the end of the episode I can assure you that for sure okay next we get to see Hotaro and the kid talking Hotaro is confronting the kid he's like hey bro you really want to do this something like that and Spana is looking at kind of like a font thing I'm not sure what that is I, I, I think that is kind of like a Kemi riser thing but then again I could be wrong next this scene is really really interesting okay like this is uh something that I really want to talk about and that is the fact that we actually get to see a scene where uh Ar Afrotos is actually talking to Rene okay so why this girl actually approach Rene itself like why does Afrotos approach Rene we are not sure but maybe in order to kind of progress to the second phase of the of the plan that they actually have for Master Gleon they actually needs a power of the good like the good side of alchemy like do not those people that actually practice black alchemy but instead they, they need a balance 
between the the light and the dark so that when they both of them come together like things th things are gonna go better something like that or maybe the father of Rene Kodo is really really still alive and right now they are like this girl is trying to like capture Rene use her as hostage to force Fuga to do something to to, to I don't know what what they're gonna do maybe there's all another driver out there that they're trying to like get out of Fuga something like that it, it could be that that is the case but then again I highly doubt it okay I, I felt like this is just kind of like to show some sort of kind of like a personal connection or personal uh, vendetta against the Rines to, to make the the fight between the abyssal sister and the riakudo family felt more personal maybe we are not sure but yeah i love this scene okay like because it definitely is telling us that they are more more plot moving forward and i i love this is like the best part of the series so far the abyssal sister is like the the single most brilliant thing that the the showrunner actually chose to do like giving us three very very different abyssal sister and they are like the the person that is like moving the plot moving forward okay like rather than the main character because the main character right now how they actually write the story for the main character like he's not supposed to be the guy that moves the plot forward he's supposed to respond to what is actually happening and i felt like most of the time when you wrote a story about kind of like superhero or and all those stuff it is very very hard for you to write a story where the main character is the one that actually push the story forward it's not like this the reason why Giz is so good is because Giz is the reason why the story is being pushed forward that like he is the center of the story but for this story for Gachado it is different the center of the story is not actually on Hotaro like he is just part of the gear in the story and the sent in in all of the story the center is actually the three abyssal sisters so like that is why like when if if there's no a three abyssal sister make an appearance in that episode it's just gonna felt like eh uh, it's, it's not that strong of an episode when the three abyssal sister doesn't appear something like that okay so let me move on to the next thing okay so the next thing is obviously a close-up shot of rene's face no comment nothing else to say about her face she looks kawaii she looks good i don't know what else to say just that maybe one thing okay one thing to say is like in in this show she don't really smile a lot so it's like when you actually saw her photo like outside of the show it's like wow like she looks like way way more way more better way more cuter when she's actually smiling compared to how she usually look in the show like i think 90 percent of the time in in the show she's she looks like she don't even want to be there she don't she don't want to be in in this series like she got this the the rbfs is like why am i even here i'm why am i surrounded by idiots and all the stuff and i i love it okay i love that that part about her but and it's like we actually get to see her like she's the only character so far that managed to show quite a lot of emotion like we get to see her being sad being like vulnerable being angry being disgusted and and all those stuff like she's not like just character that is always grumpy like my father died my and all the stuff but we actually get to see her go through a, a roller coaster of emotions something like that so hopefully we get to see more of her and hopefully she get a kind of like a really really strong character growth moving forward and eventually become a Kamen Rider herself okay so I'm really really looking forward for that but moving on we get to see the Sabo Nido Kami card and it looks very very interesting don't know what else to say next we get to see Hotaro looking at the Kami card some action scene with Gachado, and then we get to see the new form okay so so long sabo needle okay so this is gonna be a supposed to be a emotional episode next week i think but then again i'm not sure how they are gonna go with the story hopefully it's nice hopefully it's amazing because i am really really excited to see what is to come moving forward for this story okay but with that being said that is all from me hope you enjoy this uh episodic breakdown uh not really like an episodic breakdown but an episodic theory episode like this is like every, this is where i get all the creative juice from like every single time i watch the trailer i speculate what the story is gonna be like and most of time most of the time i get it wrong 
and it is exciting when I get it wrong. Okay, like if I get it right all the time, the show is just too predictable. I I love it when I get it wrong. Okay, that is like the the juice of this this channel, the juice of this video as well. Okay, to get it wrong, and at the same time you you get to have fun just speculating and just thinking about the possibility that is gonna come. So that is all from me about Kamen Rider Gachado episode seven trailer reaction breakdown theory whatever you wanna call it. Hope you enjoy, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Goodbye.